Hello, welcome to October. Wonderful October is when we get to see the fall come in. And I have my first guest for October, Dr. Sean Strolls. I just want to say that I have watched you um, do your teachings on uh, basically Amen. Facebook. And I actually showed up when my uncle Wesley was preaching at your church. Amen. And I was so impressed. I love so many of the things that you say, um, you know, when it comes to like, the ministry and the church and marriage and couples. I just love um, the way you present it. So real, so so authentic, right? And um, and that's hard to find a lot of times. Some things are so over spiritualized in a body in sure. Christ. So welcome. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, welcome. Um, so the first thing I want to kind of talk about is your, you know, um, ministry, right? Can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into ministry and what made you become a pastor? Uh, my grandfather on my father's side, who I don't know was a preacher, on my mother's side, there are um, no preachers, not uh, so much as people going to church. So I'm going to presume that this preaching thing came from my father's side. Yeah. Um, so I've been preaching for quite some time. I think the first time I ever preached a message, if you want to call it that, was maybe like 1986. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 52 years old now, so I've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, um, yeah. Didn't, didn't, didn't stay in church much after that. Uh, left out around 88. Um, and did a whole lot of things that I wanted to do, selling drugs, locked up, blase, blase, four or five years of all of that. And then, um, the Pentecostals call it reclaim. So, uh, <laughs> the, the Lord allowed me to retract those repercussions and decisions I had made and mm -hmm. allow me back into the body of Christ. So here I am. Amen. I love it. I want to go back to your story a little bit because I think it's so important. Sure. A lot of times we glorify ministry, right? And we look at pastors and leaders and we think that they've always just arrived, right? And where sure. they are. But there's always a story. And I always feel like I could be wrong, Pastor, but I will say that I always feel like the people who go through the most are the ones who are the most useful in ministry, right? Um, mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that story about you just kind of leaving the church and, you know, being out there and how even coming back to the church made you even more impactful for Christ? Sure. Um, well, let's start by saying there is an atrocity as we intellectualize just the terminology of church. And I think this might be a good time to divulge. We, The church is ecclesia, the called out ones from another group. So the church, which are those that are inculcated in the body of Christ are those that he has already separated. Yes. So, the, so the question is, can someone he has separated ever leave him? Mm, because, because they're the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Not to, Most time people interpret church to be the building we congregate in. That's a building. The church is the body of Christ. And there are two ways that a person can... Uh, if you would have themselves out of Christ. One is the Bible says, these are they that are ordained to this condemnation. Mm -hmm. So whether they get the Holy Ghost or not, uh, whether you get baptized in water, whether they're ministers, whatever, they are still ordained for that condemnation. Mm -hmm. The second one is according to Revelations, the Bible says that if anyone would delete anything from the prophecy, that God would delete their name from the Lamb's book of life. So wow. from the church, you can't leave except one, you've been ordained to that condemnation, or two, you have retracted something from the prophecy of Christ. So as far as leaving Christ, no. As far as leaving that building that we mm -hmm. presumably worship in, and I can give you a better definition of the word worship, too, if you want that, but for lack of time, um, so in leaving the church, it was based on a, a lot of, first of all, I was only 16 years old and I had been in religion or the building, the church all my life. 
Um, I remember at four or five years old, I'm going to church, putting the hymn books and the Bibles behind the benches. So my mother kept us in some type of religious organization. Yes. Um, in that coming into Pentecostalism, we were retracted from doing things that as a Jehovah Witness, we were allowed to do. Wow. As a Jehovah Witness, I'm out witnessing 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I got my own, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I was a minister in the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall at the age of seven. Wow. Eight, nine, 10, 11 years old. So ministry has always been a part of my life. Um, in, in being a Jehovah Witness, we were allowed to go roller skating, to spend quality time with family and still do our Bible study. In the Pentecostal church, we couldn't go roller skating. You can't go watch yeah. this. Yeah. You can't go to the moon. So we were, we were under such a restricted lifestyle that I did not want the restrictions. Mm. Now, wait, I gotta stop right there because that's so okay. good. I want to make sure okay. everybody heard yeah. that because yeah. I all, often, um, you know, really, I'm really into definitions and really into sure. understanding things. So that's what the church means to me. But when I talk about the church, I talk about it as a place where people congregate in a building sure. because that's people understand it, right? Sure. Sure. Um, and I think that's so important what you said, right? Is that you're leaving, you know, not leaving the body of Christ because I, yeah. you know, we often. You know, some spiritual religious folks folks think sure. that just because you leave the, the church building, even if you leave the fellowship, that that sure. means you no longer belong to God. And that's just sure. foolishness. Sure. But I love what you said. You can continue. I just wanted to right. about that. <laughs> well, let, let me let me go. To, let me parenthecate for a moment. Then we'll come back and pick this up. When the Bible talks about forsaking the gathering together, it wasn't talking about coming together in the sanctuary. Hmm. The apostles' doctrine in Acts chapter 2 was going to each other's houses, breaking bread, and fellowshipping. So yeah. our terminology, our Western culture, American English terminologies run contradistinctive to the biblical concepts. Mm -hmm. And so un until we as leaders, whatever capacity, are going to go back and find the eccentricity and the real meaning of the yes. text, then we're never going to, according to Ephesians 4, come into the unity of the faith. Mm. Because faith, from the Greek word pistis, means a convincing argument wherein I change my behavior. Yes. So yes. Un until we all come together to understand the scripture and, and move away from, oh, well, the Lord showed me this. Oh, but the Lord showed me this. The Lord can't show two people the same scripture a different way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, because Peter said there is no private interpretation. Mm -hmm. So if you see it one way and I see it another way, that's private interpretation. Now, there is something called progressive revelatory illumination. Yes, and, what yes. that, and what that means is you're not wrong but you did not finish the whole interpretation of the text. Mm -hmm. All right. So remember the man that was preaching and Ananias and Sapphira, what did they do? They grabbed him and they said, yo, we show you a more excellent way. That is a progressive mm -hmm. revelatory illumination. That means you got some, but let me finish explaining the rest of the verse to you. And so a lot of times we have people who take a verse, make it yeah. a dogmatic doctrine. The mm. Greeks would call it the dascalia, make it a doctrine or a teaching that's actually not fully elaborated or fully interpreted. So, for instance, let's go back to the word religion. Now I'm going to go back to what we were saying before. Everyone always says another misnomer is these religious folks. Mm -hmm. Well, how can religion be bad when religion is in the Bible? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The James chapter one, verse 26 says, if a man believeth he has religion and brideth not his tongue, deceiveth his heart, this man's religion is in vain. Mm. So what is so what is religion? Religion in the Greek means a specific set of rules and teachings that we follow, that we implement into mm -hmm. our life. Mm -hmm. So if, in fact, a man believeth he has these rules. These instructions, which is the word of God, yeah. and, doth, and doth not bridle his tongue, he deceives his heart. 
The reason why people don't want religion or rules is because they don't want to be accountable for what they do and they say. Wow. Wow. So I want to be a religious person. I want to be a person that have rules. I want to be a person that follow order and follow God's biblical didactics. That's what we want to have. But mm -hmm. because we have misinterpreted the definition yeah. of religion, we've made an atrocity out of it that everybody's, oh, I don't want to be religious. No, I want to be religious. So let me go back. One thing that I define was the leaders, and I'm and I'm blessed to say this, the leaders that I did um, serve under in whatever capacity, even if it was just being a member, yeah. I, I had some very good leaders, some very good leaders. Mm -hmm. um, but the more Pentecostal of those leaders were more strict as it pertains to liberties. Mm -hmm. So it took me um, my my first PhD is in religious education. So my objective was to to compare every religion to yeah. see where it came from, how it began, mm -hmm. and what those differences are. That's good. Because whatever liberty the Bible gives me, I'm going to take all of them. <laughs> and, and whatever bondages the Bible has, I'm going to be under those. Mm -hmm. Um. A lot of people don't like that about me, that I'm not just going to go with the tie. Like, okay, I get it, but that's not the tie. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's not the Bible way, rather. That's the tithe way. That's not the Bible way. And, yeah. at the end of, and at the end of the day, if you don't follow God, you will be held accountable for mm -hmm. not following his word. He's not going to ask me. Yeah. Did you follow her? Did you follow him? Did you do what they? He's not going to ask me that. He's going to say, "Did you do what Moses said? Did you do what Zechariah said? Mm -hmm. Did you did you do what Paul said?" Those are the ones that we're supposed to be emulating. And there's a lot of non-emulation of God's word, and it it honestly bothers me. So that I love that. I love that. I like yeah. that because that really breaks down a lot of things. Um. So you had great leaders, but the restrictions were the thing that made you really leave. Yeah. No, I often find, though, I must say that when leaders do take the, I would say, a break, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, or whatever it is, sometimes it's not a break. Sometimes it's God ordained. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, that we that, you know, our path strays. Um, and they go out. What were their principles that you learned? stepping away from you know um the organized church organized yeah. religion sure that um helped. sure one thing bishop bonner said to us and and i've held on to that and that is you don't have to show a backslider how to come back mm. because they've already been there mm -hmm. they don't they don't need the church building per se they don't need nobody to pray for them they don't need They've been there. They they know how to get. All right. So there's a difference in being in the church building and then being in the presence of God. There is a difference. Oh, now, I'm, I'm not going to, I, I don't want to make this as complicated as it probably can get. But again, for the sake of time, if God is a spirit, then mm -hmm. there must be a matriculation to that environment. Mm -hmm. So each one of our bodies are adaptable to the environment that we live in, which means there must be a transmogrification or even a transmutating from what yes. I am yeah. to where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Because God is spirit, I have a spirit. He is, I have a. Mm -hmm. So there are levels that I have to climb in order to get to the presence of God. Mm. Most people don't even know what those are. For instance, we are so connected to having the spirit of God. That's Greek for pneuma, or the Hebrews would call it uh, Ruach, the holiness, Ruach mm -hmm. Hakadish. But what about the seven spirits that are alongside? God on the throne, that's there also. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so what is the definition of spirit? Spirit means loop and refined. It means essence and nature. Mm-hmm. And whatever essence and nature that is, if it is inoculated in the individual, it will contribute to actions and behaviors. Mm. So whatever spirit you have in you, you'll know by how you act and behave. Ooh, you step on some toes right there. <laughs> because you know what? We live in a different world today. I just want to touch yeah. on that. I know I'm going yeah. on the topic. You know, the world is do whatever makes you happy. You know what I'm saying? The world sure. that we live in today says, God is just going to excuse this. It's okay. Sure. As long as you love sure. God and you're good to people, you can have whatever behavior, whatever character, you can hurt people. And you know what? Sure. You just go to God and ask for forgiveness. And it's mm-hmm. going to be okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. We, we, we have adopted, we have adopted more things in our church setting and religious organizations that are not Bible. It's mm-hmm. not Bible. One of the things that God is concerned about, all right, so Chronicle says, Solomon prayed, he's built, he's built this temple, it's done. And he goes to God seven times. And he says, if this happened, will you hear from heaven? If this happened, will you hear from heaven? If this happened, will you hear from heaven? Days later, God comes and visits Solomon and he says, if my people, which are called by my name. Let's mm-hmm. stop. Well, who are the people called by the name of God? Let's mm-hmm. stop. What is the name of God? Is it mm-hmm. El? Is it El Elyon? Is it El Ohim? Is it Jehovah? Jehovah Jireh? Right. Jehovah Zikanu? Yeah. Well, so which, so how do we, how are we called by the name of God? Mm. When you look at if my people, which are called, the word called means to beseech, to ask, and to beg. Mm-hmm. So in Genesis chapter 5, when it says, then begin men to call upon the name of the Lord, they weren't calling, hey, El Shaddai, hey, El Elyon. They had been in, they had been alive for these five chapters of Genesis. They didn't mm-hmm. know who created this earth, who put this garden here. How do we get here? So they begin to beg, what is your name? Like, who are you? So God says to Moses, I only revealed myself to three people prior to you, Moses. Mm-hmm. Who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who do you yes. reveal yourself as? El Shaddai. Moses, to you, I reveal myself as Heya Asher Heya. To mm. so the Israelites, I want to reveal it as Jehovah, the God of the covenant. So God goes through this this moment of processing. So when yeah. Solomon hear God say, if my people, which are called by my name, what name is he talking about? So yeah, he yeah. wasn't talking about Jehovah or El Elyon. He was saying, if my people who are begging and calling the word name in Hebrew is the word Shem, which happens to be the third son of Ham, of yeah. um, Noah rather, of Noah. Yeah. The word Shem means character and integrity. So let's flip it and let's put it back in there. If my people, which are begging and beseeching me to live according to my character, will first humble themselves. See? Yeah. Repent from their sins. Turn from their wicked. So people people are taking out the character of God. And we're we're employing that because I go to church, God has to. Or because I'm a good person. (laughs) Or because I'm a good person. He only responds to people of his character Mm -hmm. or people of his name. So until we go back to teach, we need character. Mm -hmm. why Why do you think the Bible says one of the things that the Holy Ghost was going to do in... Uh, Acts chapter two was put his spirit upon flesh. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think of that, I'm going to put my spirit, let's go back to what we define spirit as. My essence, my nature, that's going to contribute to your actions and your behavior. But I'm not going to put it in your flesh. I'm going to put it on your flesh. In other words, I'm going to let my behavior be what becomes your behavior. Not your behavior become my behavior. And so until God takes the precedent and until God is number one, then we will never, we will never 
be able to consult God, be able to follow God, be able to even hear God, because God is not number one. I'll say this and I'll give you back the mic. When the Lord says to Moses, he says, Moses, I want you to make the Ark of the Covenant. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to put the shittim wood, but I want you to put gold on the outside and then gold on the inside. And this transmogrification of the logos means it's going to be deity, flesh, then deity. In mm. other words, unless you are wrapped in God's essence, you will never perfect that which pertains to God. Mm. And we're trying to do it fleshly. We, mm. we're, we're not gold. Gold is a symbolistic representation of deity. Until God surrounds your outside and inculcates your inside, we will never perfect that. And so... Um, and to answer your question, hopefully I haven't veered off, but to answer, your question, to answer your question, what I've learned to do over the years is that Sean can make bad decisions if God is not covering and the centrality of his flesh. Mm, that's and that's and that's a discipline. That's a level of accountability and a level of responsibility. Uh, you said something earlier, the people... Some people, I'm I'm presuming what you meant by that is some people have more to do because of the depth of their temptation. If you go back over the Bible, most of them didn't fall until after they were called. Yes, totally. Adam fell after he was called. Abraham fell after he was called. David fell after he was called. Solomon fell after he was called. Saul fell when he was called. Saul in the New Testament fell. He don't want to cuss folks out. The reason why is because Satan needs a reason to Jesus. discredit your gift based on your behavior. Ooh, wait a minute. Hold on. Doc. I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> I love that so much. I mean, we yeah. have, I have these conversations because, you know, as a very imperfect person, sure. who's trying to show the character of Christ in every right. way that I live, but still, you know, under flesh, you know. Sure. Um, I have often discussed this, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor's daughter. Sure. So I was raised in a church, grew up in a church. And I look at people and I'm, I, you know, as a pastor's daughter, you kind of, anybody who's a pastor's kid just kind of sit back and watch sure. people. And at one point was so disgusted with the church, they felt sure. like this church thing ain't for me, right? Sure. Because they sure. saw too much. <laughs> but I remember saying, how can these people call themselves Christians? I almost hate the word Christian because they have nothing that's like Christ. They carry right. meat with them. They're nasty. They, you know, they, they it was just, nobody's perfect, but at least sure. I should be able to see something in you that makes me feel like this is the Christ I want to follow. Right. Sure. Um, sure. And I remember, you know, as I've gone, you know, you went, you've gotten your PhD. I'm now getting my PhD. Sure. Right. And I, I'm, I'm sitting among intellectuals many of who are, you know, intellectualized, but don't believe in God, right? In any mm -hmm. kind of way, but they're very peaceful people. And here they are sure. claiming Buddha and, you know, Hinduism. And I'm like, these people right here have more Christ-like qualities than some of the people mm -hmm. I go to church with. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I love that, what you said, because I can see that in today's world and, you know, in sure. the worlds I've been a part of. Sure. Well, there, there are two things I like to highlight. One is you can't look at a subjective response to an outside stimuli mm -hmm. to believe that that's a person's character and not a behavior. Yes, yes. Um, okay. One psychologist said this, that there is a difference in behavior and character. Yes, yes. Behavior is how I became based on my response to something that was thrown toward me. Mm. Now, if that thing's not constantly thrown toward me, it's not a behavior. Yes, yes. So someone cuts me off and I'm singing gospel and I, I say something. Yeah. <laughs> is that a behavior? Is that a character? Yeah, because yeah. a behavior is just my action in response to something. A mm -hmm. character is an enduring how you are. Yeah. So just because for 23 hours you smile mm -hmm. and that last hour you're frustrated, angry and said some words you should not. 
I cannot impose upon you a judgment because mm. you because you committed a behavior that's yeah. not your character. And a lot of times, and a lot of times we see people because of a stimuli, mm -hmm. something from the outside of them objectively caused them to respond a certain way. Now, they might have been, they might not have been at the level of a depth of conviction or accountability where they can override that normalcy in that behavior. Mm -hmm. But until we teach people how to not respond, we can't hold them accountable on how they respond. So we teach you how to shout, but not how to just say, let them say whatever they're going to say. And it is what it is. We show you how to give tithe and offerings, but we don't show you how your mother was a hothead and so was your father. So normally, because you're in that line, you're going to go off. But if you do these couple of steps, you can bring that behavior under Ooh. control. And the subjection, so, yeah. So we in the church, we don't teach how to be responsible for our behaviors. Mm -hmm. We say, bring them to the altar and pray for them and anoint them. And we've been, having sex out of marriage is not a character, it's a behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And until you understand the ramifications of that behavior, then a person will stop. I say it like this. I used to sell drugs, a lot of drugs. And I don't care how much money they spent and lost, how much family issues they've encumbered upon themselves. I don't care how chopped up their arms and legs are. Mm -hmm. Until they are ready to stop, they won't. Yes. My ex-wife, and I'm not going to get into that, but my ex-wife said, my, my sons are in ministry now, and I'm mm -hmm. grateful yes. for them. Um, but they were not always living ministry-minded prior to ministry. And here's one of the things that I did. Because of my regret and inability to live my life, I considered or did what the church considers backsliding. I didn't want to do that to my sons. I didn't want to force them to live up to a level of conviction that even though they're the pastor's kids, they don't have that conviction. I'm the pastor, not them. So don't right. exact upon them to live what I live. I've developed this by my by my and God's intermingling. I have to, like I was allowed to find God, I have to let them find him also. So, good. so, so their inheritance is not just a bank account or a life. Uh, insurance policy. I'm also allowing them to inherit my God and my relationship with my God. Ooh, so I teach them how I read. It. I show them how I pray. I show them how I study. Mm -hmm. I show them how I live my life. So let me go back. Um, this this character then has to be something that's taught. We 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 have, we have to we have to teach them. So my my ex wife said, I'm I'm so happy that that finally they've answered their call. I said, Yeah, I'm glad too. She said, because I've been praying for them for a long time that that God would <clears throat> get them out of the stuff that they're doing. And she started naming things that they were doing. And I said, yeah, I said, the difference between you and I is you were praying for them, but I was going through it with them. Hmm. I was there when they were doing things they should not have done. But the anointing on me is enough to handle it because yes. through that, God finds them and they find God. Mm. So now their testimony is not, I made them. My sons are musicians by trade. Mm -hmm. My sons are musicians. And I went to the Lord and I said, God, <clears throat> how am I going to cause them to make this transition? They get paid a lot of money. I'm not going to tell their business. Right. But they get, they're, they're very professional. They get paid a lot of money for what they do as far as the music is concerned in the church. Right. And so I did not want them to stay in church and just to be musicians that's collecting a check, knowing that they have ministry on their plate. Mm. So I went to the Lord and I asked him, how am I going to help them make the transition from being from being musicians into being preachers and leaders. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said this to me. He said, teach them how to fall in love with me. 
So I started teaching. I said, come on, y'all. I want to teach y'all the word of God. And, and they, they were, you know, two, three years ago. I said, come on, sit. We're going to we're gonna go over the Bible for three, four hours. We're going we're gonna to talk as, as often as we possibly can. I want to show y'all how to get down and pray. I want you to follow me. Look at look at what I'm doing. I want, you to, I want you to see when I fast. I want you to see the repercussions. I want you to see when I preach and I didn't pray. I want to show, and I did that which I don't do that, but I did it that one Sunday because I wanted to show them you cannot get in God's pulpit without fasting, consecrating, and praying to be out of the flesh to be a blessing to the people. I said, now watch next Sunday when I come. I'm going to do everything I showed you to do. And they, and they were able to see the difference in the ministry. Yeah. The point is, until we cause people to be amalgamated to loving God. That's what Jesus said. You've left your first love. We have to teach people how to fall in love with God. How to yeah. fall in love. Because when you listen, I'll say this and, and I'll stop. When a woman falls in love with a man, mm -hmm. that man can do whatever he wants to do. She is not going nowhere. He yeah. can have three babies and four girlfriends and no job, <laughs> busted teeth, and no eyeballs. She, you know why? Because she's not loving him based on what he is. She's loving based from herself. Love starts subjective, then it becomes objective. For God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. So love is not a transitive attribute of God before it is a relative and an absolute attribute. I am love, then I show you my love. Women love. So you love based on who you are. The problem is don't love the wrong one. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Because you know I want to get into that. You know, because I heard you talk about this on your thing. And I said, oh, my God, this was it. Before we get into that, because I'm coming back to that. Okay. Don't love the wrong one. This is what do. I got to get to that. Because I have a whole bunch of girlfriends that look at these and they and their whole guy friends and Sure. Trust me, everybody's trying to figure it out. <laughs> you sure. know, I can tell you the sure. whole stories, and you probably have heard of yourself sure. being a pastor and, and counseling people. Sure. Um, and, and there's great stories out there too. I don't want to make it seem like they're not success stories, people who sure. are really per persevering, making it work, following God, praying together, loving together. So sure. you know, I'm I'm all for the positive. I'm not just a negative Nancy. But <laughs> I want to just sure. also before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit more about the body of Christ, right? The sure, church, as sure. I'm saying, because can you hear me? Okay, I'm back now. Yep, we're back. Um, the yep. body of Christ and the church has changed. It's changed. Sure. It's especially after the pandemic. You know, sure. I noticed a big shift. Um, sure. And um, some for the positive and some, I think, not for the positive. We mm -hmm. see a lot of people leaving the body of Christ, the mm -hmm. church, the fellowship, mm -hmm. even and they're not even going to be Christians anymore. Right. They're not going to be followers sure. of Christ, which sure. has been concerning to me because it's been concerning, but understanding in one way. Concerning because I am a advocate of fellowship. Sure. Of believers, right. I mean, there have been times when I didn't feel like going to church. And I've gone and God has strengthened me, like, you know, giving me the strength for the week, sure. even whether it's through a word, whether it's just my sister hugging me, whether it's just, you know, a testimony I heard. So I'm an advocate for us sure. meeting as a body of Christ together in face to face, not just online, you know, watching the service. Right. Sure. Um, and, and I'm an advocate. At, but I also understand because I'm a college professor and I listen to millennials and I was, sure. I'm an English professor. I get the papers of people who don't believe in God anymore because they had parents that pushed them or sure. believing that God is some type of dictator. Um, sure. How would you address that? The state of the of the body of Christ today? Sure. Well, <clears throat> there's a word that you use that I'd like to embellish and that is when we say we are christians mm. i'm not a christian mm -hmm. i'm a christian mm -hmm. and that's a difference christian comes from christmas that's not christ yeah okay christ is christos in greek yes. the hebrews will call it the messiah or the messiah and the Christos 
is the anointed one smeared with the presence of God. Mm. So when I am a Christian, I am smeared with God. I'm smeared with his presence, which inculcates word. Mm -hmm. And then what we consider to be worship, and I'll deal with worship um, in one minute. So we, we are calling ourselves Christians. Well, what is a Christian? What, but a Christian mm -hmm. is different. And a lot of times we don't understand that even the misusage of a word breathes something negative on us. Mm -hmm. So if we would, if you go back to the text, even when it says Christian, they were first called Christian, Paul was not called a Christian. If you go to the text in Acts, it were those that were in the land mm -hmm. that were listening to Paul that were now labeled Christians. Ah. Mm -hmm. Paul never left his Jewish belief mm -hmm. to the day he died. It says that in Acts chapter 27. He continued in the law of Moses uh, and in following the law of Moses, he continued to be a Jew that was a messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. So if in fact we are Christ Jans, then we are messianic saints. That's what we are supposed to be. We're not Jewish, but we both, the Jews and us, follow Christ. He's the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't even call him the Messiah. Even when you say the word Christ, if you take out Christ, Christos is Messiah. So mm -hmm. what is what is the Messiah? That this 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 individual that has been smeared with God, that is our example. Now watch. Jesus gives this prayer in Matthew chapter six, and he says, When we are to pray, we must pray like this. Our Father. In that prayer, there are 19 different components. Of course, I'm not going to go into all 19. I'm just going to go into right. one. Our Father. Mm -hmm. When I say our Father, I'm talking about those in the ecclesia, in the body of Christ. Yes. So when I say our Father, I mean if you are in the body of Christ, I'm praying for you and don't even know your name. Because mm -hmm. you're in the body. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for everybody whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life because all of us are in the body. So when we go into prayer, we should not say, my father. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't go into prayer saying, oh God, I need. No. The first principle of prayer was to include everybody that's in the body. Our father. Which means, mm -hmm. now I'm going to... The Pentecostals are not going to like this statement, but particularly <laughs> I'm the scholars, but it'll be okay. I can fight my own battles. Yes. Which, means, which means if Jesus said to say our father, well, then he's included in that, which makes him my brother. Because according to Paul in Ephesians chapter one, Paul said to the God and father of our Lord or our Christ or our Messiah. Mm -hmm. So Jesus wants us to know None of us are greater than the other. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be embellishing one another simply in our prayer life. How many of us, you got you to, okay. If we followed the prayer of Jesus, then Paul and the rest of the apostles wouldn't have to tell us how to pray. Pray so, one for another. If we just follow Jesus when he said, say our father. Right. Because we do not live up to that expectation of being a Christian. So let's move into this. Here's the question. Why go to church? Mm -hmm. what, what are you going? What, what are you going? If a person can say, I almost didn't make it today, but I had to press. I don't have to press to go to church because I know what I'm going to get. Yes, that's good. People are going to a place and are not being satisfied with what they're supposed to be getting. So if I'm not going to get what I'm supposed to get, why go? Yes, yes. See? So yes. why? Wh what is the purpose 
of this building? What is the purpose of us going together? What is the purpose of us? Uh, the, the writer says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. The house, yes. So here you have a writer saying, I was glad when they said, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, I'm happy, I'm excited. Well, why do we got all these people not excited? Not happy. Right. <laughs> they, they, they gotta, they, you mean to tell me you're excited when you go out to have drinks? You're excited when you go on that date. You're excited when you know you're about to philander and he's going to project testicular fortitude. You're <laughs> excited when you go and yeah. get your clothes and you're buying Givenchy and Zhao Zhidor. You're excited when you're going to get a brand new car, but you're not excited to go to the house of God. You know why? Because those things pacify your flesh. Yes. God's house is to pacify your spirit. And we've never turned on how your spirit is supposed to be energized when you come here. So we make it a fleshly entertainment and that can be appeased by going to the bar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My flesh can be appeased by buying me some new shoes. Yes, yes. But my spirit can't be appeased by an alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. My spirit can't be appeased by sitting here having some sexual intimacy. That mm -hmm. doesn't appease my flesh. So until we know why we're going to church, people don't want to go. That's why they've left. And, and people, yes. that have been, people that have been in church for years have used COVID as a way of getting out of the church. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because, they were, because they were so solically tied to a place with no spiritual connection. Ooh. And okay. there's a... And there's a difference between the spirit and the soul. The Bible says in Hebrews that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of mm -hmm. soul and spirit, which means only the word of God can pierce, find an entrance, and aberrate the spirit from the soul, which means the two are separate but are so coagulated and mm -hmm. so commeshed you can't find the difference. So sometimes you feel something yes. and you think it's yes. the spirit and it ain't the spirit, That's it's right. the soul. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you think it's the soul and it's really the spirit, spirit because yes. they are so closely connected that only the word of God can decipher between the two of them. So we have not found a people who have been so spirited centered. They are emotionally centered. So we shout them. We dance them, we prophesy to them, we lay hands on them. Yes, we do yes. all of these emotional conduits, if you would, and we have not prepared them to be a spirited people. Ooh, that's so deep. That's like deeper than deep. Yeah. I, I, you know, I love that because I, I love it. I, just, I love everything about it. So I'm the, <laughs> I can say so much because I feel like, you know, when I'm writing my dissertation, I'm writing about African Americans, and this is especially true for people sure. of color who have sure. been who do their trauma and do the pain of slavery and do other things that we've come through have um adapted emotionalism into our spirituality right sure. and so that has sure. become more over impacting sure. impactful and than the actual spirit than actually getting to the root of the issue right if, if, um, if you, i'm sorry no 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 please go ahead yeah if if you look at Psalms 150, verse 6, and Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says in Psalms 150, it shows who is to praise, mm -hmm. where they are to praise, what they are used to praise, why they are to praise. It Psalms 150 gives us all of that. Yeah. When the last verse says, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Yes. We've said, you're breathing. Praise the Lord. Pray, praise the Lord. That's not what the text says. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord, you have to have breath. It didn't say you have to breathe. Mm. It said you have to have breath. What is breath? Go back to Genesis chapter two, verse seven. The Bible says, and God breathed breath into man and man became a alive soul. So the breath of God activated the dead soul in the Adam and caused him to be a living nafash or a living soul. 
until the breath of God is housed in your soul, you yes. can never praise God. Ooh. So what is the breath of God? The breath of God is the intelligence, the intelligentsia, the ability to communicate to God. So mm -hmm. in Psalms 150, when it uses the word praise, it's the word halal. Mm -hmm. And what hal halal slash halal, halal for Lucifer, but yes. halal, same, same words, different variations. So what does halal mean? It means to do something that contradicts the breath of God. It means to be boastful, braggadocio, egomaniac, even megalomaniac. It means to be at this state of proud and arrogancy. So what the Bible says is when you have God's breath in you, it'll make you walk around and do something that's crazy. Like telling sickness, I'm not going to die. I know he's a healer. See, yes, that's the one that praises God, the one whose soul has been alive based mm -hmm. on the communication that we have with God. OK, so now let's move into worship. What is worship? Because everyone always seemed to suggest that worshiping is when you go to church and you sing. Oh, come on, lift your hands. <laughs> right. Let everyone worship the Lord. OK, well, if that is the case. The Bible says Job lost his house, Everything. his kids, his oxen, his cattle. The only thing he kept was the woman that wanted him to curse God. That's right. <laughs> Satan has to lead. No, okay, another one. So let's go back. <laughs> so, so he loses everything. Mm -hmm. And he falls down and he worships. Yes. And the Bible says, and he said... Necker came out of my mother's womb. Necker shall I return. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So worship is not what I sing. Worship is my submitting to God's will yeah. in the face of what I've lost. Mm -hmm. Which means worship is about character. Because then it says in all of this, Job did not sin against God. Yes. Yeah. Real, real worship is when I want to do this. I, I got every opportunity to do this. But character says to me, this is not what God has for my life. Mm, so good. I love it. I love so, it. so why am I going to church? I'm going to church to be taught how to submit to God's will, how to have a, a, dying, a dying love for God's word, and then if I get an opportunity, I'll give them a praise. Yes, but I yes. am here for worship, which is submission to God's will. And I can't submit to his will if I don't know his word. Mm, I love it. I want to transition and use something you said, because I think this is so okay. important. I heard you talk about marriages and relationships sure. um, in your, your Bible studies. And sure. I know we only have like 15 minutes left, but I just got to get back to this because it sure. was so important about choosing the wrong one and choosing the right one. I think lines are blurred um, in today's society, partly because of social media, right? We've, we've created sure. these fantasies in the head of what, we, of what relationships looks looks like, right? There's sure. always a meme. We've, we, we've also um, patterned ourselves out of other people's relationships, which I think sure. is a problem. Um, and... Um, a lot of times, you know, we always say, we always hear the, the people say, put God first in your relationship. And some people don't do that, right? Like, like you know, sure. people are not, it's, it, these these sayings sound great, but a lot of, like, sure. love yourself, put God first in your sure. relationship, you know, and then no one is really being taught. So I want you to just to kind of talk about choosing, how do you, like, what choosing the right one. Sure. And I know it's it's a long discussion, but if you could just make it like short so that way we can, you know, sure. people that are listening, I know they're going to tap into this, sure. you know, choosing the one that God has for you and being, you know, deception is, is high too, you know, sometimes sure. you can think you've got something right and, and it's not. So how do sure. you, in today's, you know, have a godly relation, have a relation that's ordained by God, you know? Sure, sure. Well, the first question is, what is the definition of right? Mm. What, what, is it, what does it mean to be right or to choose right or to have the right thing? 
maybe we should retract that and say, what is the best thing for me at this moment? Mm, I like that. And whatever the best thing for me at this moment is the right thing. Mm -hmm. Right has to line up with, you can't have righteousness if there is no right. And right means I have conformed to what God's will is as it pertains to this. Mm. So when the scripture says, acknowledge him in all thy ways, he will yeah. direct thy path. Well, your path may be directed to be single. Well, mm -hmm. then that's what's right for you. Yeah. My path might be directed to be married. Then that's what's right for me. Yeah. So how do we choose presumably the right person? Is is there a choosing? How do we yeah. choose? Is there okay. a choosing? That's so, a good one. <laughs> because I often feel like, you know, you know, there's two levels of thought in this, right? The first mm -hmm. level is, is that uh, um, there is no choosing, that it's really, everything is ordained and, and kind mm -hmm. of orchestrated, right? You mm -hmm. just are walking in that orchestrated path. And then there's the, the thing that you have free will. You have to have some type of choice. Mm -hmm. So please, you know. <laughs> Well, if let's 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 use that concept for one moment and try to swiftly go back. If everything we do is ordained by God, then God ordains for us to sin. Because mm -hmm. we because some of us are allowed to do it. Others are not. So, I mean, like, is, is that allowed by God? Is, 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 is he saying it's my will for you to sin now? I can in, in the Bible, Genesis, uh, Abraham. Abram goes into the land with Sarah. She's beautiful. She's old, but this woman is beautiful. King Abimelech of Gerar, he takes her. He doesn't sleep with her, but he takes her. The Bible says God puts a curse on the land. Yeah. That the king goes back to God and say, Lord, what, what happened? Do you do? And God says, you have another man's wife. He says, no, it wasn't even his fault. <laughs> the man told the man told me that that wasn't his, his wife. It was his right. sister. The Lord says, "I know, I know." He said that, the, and 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 this this was good. The king says, "Well, will you punish a righteous man?" Mm. And the Lord says, "No, that's why I stopped you from sinning." Mm. Yeah. See? So the point is, is everyone allowed to sin? Is, it, is Do we have a choice in that? We have a, the, the scripture says, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Yeah. Serving God is a choice. And God has written your name down, watch this, based on the prognosco mm -hmm. for knowing that you're going to choose him, not made to choose him. That's good. I like so that. I, so I know you're going to choose me. I'll write your name down. I know you're not going to choose me. So I'm not writing your name down. Mm -hmm. And only those who I know will choose me and their names are written down can have their names removed by taking away the word from the prophecy. Mm. So it's our choice. It's our choice. All right. So enough about that. Let me go back. I so, like that. Too. So how do we choose? Most of the time, particularly in the church, we choose based on presumed anointing or gift. Yes. So, so we measure our natural life based on a spiritual profundity. Bad. <laughs> that has not, tripped a lot of people up. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not marrying your gift. Yes. Yes. Your gift will always work right as long as you maintenance that with fasting and praying and lifestyle. Yes. But I don't know too much about your character. Mm -hmm. Because your character is your behavior. Your gift is the spirit's behavior. Ooh. Listen, I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Okay, this is so deep to me. Because I have had this conversation. People have gotten married based on people's anointing and people's level sure. of gift. Right? It's, it's natural because we, mm -hmm. especially of people of color we see gifting it's like big sure. to us. you know what i'm sure. saying sure. and so i have learned throughout the years that that is a a trap it's Absolutely. a trap because if you don't get to know like i would rather take someone with excellent character that loves god 
than somebody who's anointed, gifted on preaching, Absolutely. whatever, out here, yeah. but on a, on seven days out of the week, their character sucks. The, the reason why, and I made this statement earlier, the reason why these people sinned after they were called and chosen is because we've learned how to manipulate the people. Mm. Oh, that's so good. We've learned if we perform well and shroud not being anointed, then the people will respond with adulations and accolades. So we scream when we preach, we yell, we we dance, knowing you just got out of bed with a harlot 20 minutes ago. <laughs> right, right, right. So you're be so you're behaving because there's a spirit on you causing you to act a certain way. So you so you okay, so because time is slipping. Let me let me go to Genesis and let me go to Genesis. Yeah. Clearly, God had visited with Adam and Eve prior to them sinning because God went to the to the place where he where he always called Adam and Adam wasn't there. Yes. Yes. So he says to Adam, where are you? Well, mm -hmm. if this is the first time that I'm coming in contact with you, you can't ask where I am. I am. You're asking where I am because I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The first sign of sin is you're not in your space. Oh. You're not in your place. You're removed from what it is that you normally do, number one. Number two, you're hiding and covering yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are, the, those are the two signs that a person has now been disobedient to God. They retract and now they have to cover. Well, there's a lot of covering in the body of Christ. <laughs> yeah. So we speak in tongues, we're covering. We, we're dancing, we're covering. We, we, we're doing our list, we're covering. Because we know, in essence, that's not what we were doing 25 minutes ago, two hours ago. If you were, if God was to take some of our phones and just go through them while we're in church, it's an atrocity. All right. So how, yes. do, how do we how do we choose? Let me let me try to give this as quickly as simple as I can. God comes and He takes the man and He puts the man in the garden. The Bible says, in your Bible it says red, but in the original Hebrew it says side. Side means He halved the man. Mm -hmm. So he halves the man yes, and yes. take the half of the man mm -hmm. and makes him a woman. And then it says he closes up, which means mm -hmm. he repaired the side he took. That's why if every person, and this is, this is a, a biological reality, mm -hmm. one side of our body is not the same as the other side. Right, right. One eye is up, one ear is down. It's not the same yeah. because it is to show us that our bodies have been repaired because it was severed when God took the woman and God took the side and made the woman. Mm. See, you're, you're, you're put back together. So God comes <clears throat> and he puts the man to sleep and he says, I'm going to give you a help meet, a mirrored, independent, autonomous person that has the same authority you have. But <laughs> you know a lot of them like no way hear that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, she, be, because she's you. Mm -hmm. And you're autonomous. Yes. Because yes. you have a right to govern. Yes, yes. Now watch watch what the Lord says. He says, takes this side makes this woman and then he gives this woman an assignment mm -hmm. Adam you have a responsibility but Adam looks around and he sees all these animals with a wife and he looks around and he's like well I don't have one so the Lord makes a help meet what is a help meet one who provides whatever is needed and lacking. How do you choose the right person? I like that. I like that. Ooh, that was a, that was good for me. <laughs> he has God. Mm -hmm. He has four rivers that waters the garden. Mm -hmm. 
He has bedellion, onk stones, and diamonds in of the four. He has animals that obeys him. He has a garden, a plethora of livelihood. He has food. He has sustenance, but he doesn't have help. Which means I must choose a person or be chosen by a person that has a vision to accomplish something in life. Because as a woman, you are a helper. That's yeah. why you women take men and make them into what they don't believe themselves. Okay. Because y'all got push power. Mm -hmm. So why are we, as a woman, why then are we choosing men with no vision? With no goal. I'm going to tell you why. Because time is wrapping up and I don't no, want to go. Gotta, this is so good. Please. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so, so let's look at, let's look at the curse yes. to answer how we choose. Yes. Yes. Because Adam and Eve were both cursed the same way. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were both cursed the same way. Both of them. What was Adam's curse? You will toil and labor, labor and you will have a horrible return from the ground. Mm. Okay. The ground is what I made you from. <laughs> so I'm going to let you toil and work hard and sweat. And no matter how much you work hard and sweat, you will never be compensated because I cursed where you came from. The mm -hmm. ground. Okay. Let's look at Eve. What's her curse? Childbirth. Her curse yeah. is to desire a man oh, okay. because that's where she came from. Slow down. So that means the two curses that's on the woman is to give you babies and you'll never respect me and to desire you and give you all you want and labor to keep you and you'll never respect me like you should. So the curse of the woman is to labor from the seed that birthed her and it never shows her appreciation. Just like Adam must labor from the ground he was produced from that will never give him back what he's laboring for. Wow. So how do you choose? You choose based on those in your proximity who is best susceptible and mm -hmm. who is best qualified with what the vision is that you're seeking. Mm -hmm. If you don't have nowhere to go, why do you need somebody? For what? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I met and, and we can, and I'm I'm not gonna hold you. We I met my wife, my current wife, not in the church. I met my wife outside of the church. Yeah. And we were friends for 12 years. Come to find out she was from the Pentecostal church. She knew all the ramifications. She just wasn't what you would consider an active member. Yeah. When, when her and I dated, she didn't even know I was a preacher. I never told her. Because not all women, I want to be careful, not all women, but when they find you're a preacher, you travel the world, you're over here, you're over here, you're doing this, da 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 they're attracted to a title. I need you to be attracted to a work. Yeah. And I need you to I need you to need to get your hands dirty. And I couldn't find that because the typical woman in church is about what are you going to give me? See, I've been through that for 19 years already. I wasn't, go mm -hmm. I was not going back into, I'm going to be the sole provider. I'm going to do everything. And you just sit home looking pretty. I don't mm -hmm. need your sex. I don't need you to cook. I can iron my own clothes. I can yeah, vacuum. I, I can wash my clothes and I can clean very well. And I'm an excellent cook. So I don't need you. Mm -hmm. I, I do not need you. For anything, I'm so, my mother made me self-sufficient. So if you're yeah. going to be in my world, what are you bringing to the team? Yeah. And that's the reason why she is the best person for me.
because she helps me accomplish my goals. Yes. I in turn help her to accomplish her goals. She don't need my money. She makes good money. She don't need my credit. She's got a great career. Um, so there, so there's no need of my personal hood, mm. but, but my spirited and my Bible knowledge, she loves it. She needs it. And, and on the opposite side, because Eve was not given to Adam to provide some spiritual content. Right. Right. <laughs> there was something natural that he needed from this woman. Yeah. So I don't need no woman because she's an evangelist or because she's a pastor's daughter or pastor's uh, daughter or, or, or because yeah. she knows yeah. how to wear a high Kojic hat or, or a cool JC hat. Right. I, don't, I don't need no. Now, and let me also say this. I'm not telling anybody that is listening or will listen to go outside of the ecclesia, the body of Christ. Right. To find your mate. What I am saying is this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Please. What I am saying is I became so connected to God that I was able to find somebody who had their name written in the Lamb's book who just wasn't active. And I caused her to reactivate her membership. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for that. I mean... You know, I would say some things on there, but I don't want anybody judging me. So I will say, I will keep it clean and say that I, I've had a lot of girlfriends who's recently been married and it's been guys outside of the church that they were able to kind of bring back because it's yeah. like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, that. and, and my knowing, my knowing my purpose and my knowing what God's will is for me, um, my wife will tell you, we, we talked and knew each other for 12 years, there was nothing sexual between us. We were strictly friends. Yeah. That's it. And it's to the place where people don't believe you can have friends of the opposite sex. And it's just friends. That's yeah. it. It's that means just you don't trust yourself. That means you don't trust yourself, yeah. actually. I hate when people have those conversations. I have friends that I've been friends with since I was 14 of the opposite sex. They call me, hey, Chalet, I need you to meet you know, this girl of thing about dating or they, you know, run things by me. Exactly. I run by them. That's so important, you know, sure. to have that, those connections. Yeah, absolutely. The Bible says, uh, and, and here's another atrocity. Um, um, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked. With, you can't go outside and meet nobody and date them. An unbeliever is different than a non-believer. Hmm. A non-believer is a person who have never known God, have never known the things of God, don't yeah. know the Bible, don't know nothing about church, and they haven't been given an opportunity. Yeah, the yeah. Bible didn't say don't be unequally yoked with non-believers. It said unbelievers. Good. Unbeliever is a person in the church that doesn't believe what they hear based on their character. <laughs> so you are more yoked with unbelievers in the church dancing and praising, then you are someone who has the integrity to say, I'm just not going until I'm ready to get myself together. Jesus. That's somebody that can tell the truth. And we don't and we don't have that. So you got a lot of marriages that have been messed up because they go to church, because you go to church, she shouts, he shouts, oh, we're gonna get together because we look like a power couple. Yes. What do you mean? What do you mean you what look is that? what is a right? what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is a what does a power couple look like? Like what a oh money like Beyonce and Jay Z. <laughs> yes. Oh okay. Or so, anointing so, level. Or you're a prophet. You're a prophetess. So now y'all belong together. You know. <laughs> one of the things that I love about my wife is that she's not in ministry. Mm -hmm. I I absolute when I come home from preaching. Yeah. And I'm on a I'm on the road all the time. I'm 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 always somewhere. Right. When I come home, I do not want her asking me, can we read the scripture? Can we do something? I don't. Right. And right. we have our time of studying of where course. we where we talk about the Bible, blah, blah, blah. I told her, I said, your life should be easier with me. I said, your life should be easier. She said, why? 
I said, now this is going to seem braggadocio, but I really mean this. Yes. I said, you lay down with the anointing that covers you and you didn't do nothing for this anointing to be there. My job and the anointing on my life is to make your job easier. You shouldn't have to pray all those hours. I got you. Yes. I go to God on your behalf. Whatever you need, you tell me, I got you. So when a person is in God, the life of the person that you're with should be easy. Ooh. That's what covering is. Yeah. She can't cover me. She yeah. can pray for me. She cannot cover me because she, you can't cover what's, all right. It's time up. Yeah. Okay. Can a woman, wait, I have a question. Can okay. a woman be a covering? Because I feel like it can be the opposite way too. What does the word cover mean? That's a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would I would think you would say, let me just say that the covering can only be a man because he it's the head. That's what I I, I you know he's the head of the household. So he could only the head of a household can actually be a covering. A covering in terms of uh the actual like umbrella you know what i'm saying what is one of the one things that women say why they want a man i want to be protected well that's covering mm -hmm. if you don't need me to cover you what do you need me for if you can cover yourself mm -hmm. why yeah. be with me when you're gonna do it what do you yeah, what do you need what do you need me for the head of the woman is the man the head of man is christ the head of christ is god this is not even a sexual discriminatory no. because right. man, Christ, God. It talks about the head. So if so, if her desire is to me, my desire is to Christ. Christ's desire is to God. Mm -hmm. God covers Christ. Christ covers me. I cover her. Mm, yes. It's an order. So mm -hmm. she can pray for me. Please. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Pray for me, but she's not my protection. Mm -hmm. Yes. I and I think I'm thinking of the scripture where the wife can sanctify the husband. Well, sanctification is different yeah. than covering. A little different, yes, yes. The word sanctification in Greek means to be set apart. So mm -hmm. because she's married to him and though he's not in church, he's still set apart from the rest of the woman because she's married to him. Mm -hmm. But she's not covering him. Yes. Because if she was covering him, why ain't he in the church? No, slow down. If she was covering him, why he ain't speaking in tongues? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. covering and sanctification are two. As a matter of fact, you go back to Jeremiah chapter one. The Bible says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I sanctified you. Mm -hmm. Which means Jeremiah was sanctified before he came out the womb. Sanctification is the act and process wherein one is set apart for something specific. So yeah. he's set apart from all those other women because he's married to her, even though he's not in the church and vice versa, the man for the woman. But that's in that scripture. We're not talking about covering. We're talking right. about sanctification. Now, I wanted to say I've had this. This is not personal towards me because I, I <laughs> even though I'm a strong woman with a lot of disagrees, sure. I, I still believe in no matter what status you when you choose or the man chooses you sure you have to make sure that he's the head of the house right no matter mm -hmm. what that's my belief but i have a lot of strong female friends okay we're all in the same position some of them mm -hmm. make more money than men so them have high positions you know it could be the the white collar versus the blue collar um you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so I, they they every now and then they'll call me and you know, it's almost like an unconscious kind of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, this is, you know, like, this mm -hmm. is what I mm -hmm. have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he might be the man, but I'm the man. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but see, that's the most demonic deception that there is. Yes. That your equality and headship is based on stuff. Oh, my God. Yes, I agree. <laughs> My wife drives a C300 Mercedes. Mm -hmm. I drive a Porsche. 
Porsche Macan Sport. Love that car. Yes. <laughs> we both we both wear expensive clothes. Yeah. She holds her own. I hold my own. Mm -hmm. Well, then who's the head if we both have the same? Because mm -hmm. stuff can't determine that. Yes. So mm -hmm. she's not with me because I have more money than she does or she makes more money than me. Mm -hmm. It cannot be any of those outside extenuating circumstances. So good. Because there's something that he can give you that that car can't. There's something that he can give you that that job can't. And I'm not even talking about sex. Right, right. It's deeper than that. Not much, much deeper. Mm -hmm. So when a woman, and 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 we've done this, we've we've done this, and, and I've I've chided with some of the friends that I know, and I said, Oh, so you you want to be an independent woman and you want to have equal what rights, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I make money too. Okay. Well, then you open the door for me when I walk through. <laughs> open the car door. Open the car door. In other words, don't make it work when you want it to work and it don't work all the time. It's got to be across the board. It does. So then that means my covering you and my headship has nothing to do with the stuff that you or I make because okay. Jesus didn't have no house. Or no wonderful donkey. He didn't have nowhere to even celebrate Passover. So if it's based on stuff, why am I letting him cover me and be my head? Ooh, say it. Yes. Why? Because there's something outside of stuff. And we've made it about the earthly, the mundane, the 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 the, the, the simplistic, the temporary. Yes. I, I, I want to just say about that, that I'm one of those friends. Yeah. My girlfriend comes to me and they forget. They forget that their husbands are the head. I'm like, girl, if you feel like that, because I'm always sarcastic with it. If you feel like right. that, then leave, get that man out of your house. You got everything. You don't need him. You, you can right. just be by yourself and single. And they be like, Charlene, why you said that? I said, because that's the way you're talking. Like, you Absolutely. Don't care about you don't care. <laughs> you don't care. You know what I'm saying? So, because it's not about the, the money he makes. It's people, not. Men, people, it's when you not. choose a partner, it has to be about multiple things. Exactly. My my wife said to me one time because I I actually said to her this some some time ago I said you don't need me you you got money you got a job you got credit like what do you need me for she said I need you for the things I can't provide for myself mm. I said whoa I'm here for stuff that she can't provide for us <laughs> <laughs> I said let me yes. I need to step my game up then I must yes. I must the when, when a relationship isn't active, there can be no relationship if there is no person. And the persons must specify what the need is mm. to see if the person can provide that. I'm with you based on your need. What do you need? Well, don't ask me mm. to be with you and you told me I don't need to pay your bills. And because I'm not paying your bills, now it's a problem. Ooh. Ooh. Did you ever sit down, not you in particularly, but in general? Yes. Have yes. they ever sat down and say, listen, I need this from a man. Mm -hmm. I need this from a woman. And I can't live without this. Then let me provide what you say you need. Now. As time go on, relationships change because times we grow. Yes, yes, yes. And if in fact it changes, there's an augmentation. Something is, 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 you know, changed into something. And now you need me to do something else. Then let's come back to the table and let's renegotiate. A relationship is about a covenant. It's about negotiation. It's mm -hmm. not about me thinking you think what I'm thinking. I have mm -hmm. a mouth. I open up. I say, this is what I need. Can you provide that? If you can't, are you willing to try? If I find information that, that's needed to, to provide you with how to provide that for me, are you willing to embellish that? Yes. So yes. all of these conversations should be had prior to exclusivity. It's only infatuation that drew me. Mm -hmm. It's conversation that leads me. 
It's infatuation that moves me to exclusivity. Now when I'm exclusive, I should have gotten all that all that conversation out of the way already. Because you can be attracted to somebody outside with a poker to expression that you are turned off by internally. She can have a suburban <laughs> beauty, but a ghetto attitude. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I, I, I made a statement and then I'm, I'm going to let you go. I made a statement and I said, I'd rather be miserable and broke with somebody I love than happy with everything with somebody I hate. Oh my God. That's real. Yes. When you love somebody, is whether they got or not. When you love somebody, love overlook faults. And if a person can still identify and press faults, they're not in love, they're in lust. Mm. So your acquisition of this object was based on a satisfaction of your subjective appraisal. This is what I know I need. So you shouldn't want to be with me to, to please you. You should want to be with me because you want to step up to please me. Adam, Ooh. please Eve. Eve, please Adam. Be yes. with somebody you're willing to compromise yourself with in order to please. I often if not, say, it's the I love wrong that. relationship. I love that because I often say the opposite of love to me is not hate. Yeah. But the opposite of love to me is selfishness. Sure. Because sure. when I when I love someone, I'm selfless for them. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make them happy. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make it work. So I love yeah. what you said. Yeah. That brings it in all of full. And I just want to say, Dr. Shaw, I know we're going to close the program, but I want you to tell people where they can find you. I know you also do spiritual classes. I wanted to register for one of those. So can you right. tell us about the classes, how they can register, how people can reach you on you know, do your, your churches. I know you have two ministry, two ministry, two yes. different locations now. Yes. Just, yeah. Just close us with that. Right. So most, most of the time people could just reach me on Facebook. That's, that seems to be the easiest way. Uh, you can actually uh, call somebody and text them. They won't answer the phone, but as soon as you inbox them, they just seem to answer inbox. I'm just yeah. wondering if we even <laughs> need phones anymore, but anyway, um, my ministry can be located through Dr. Sean Sewell's, um on Facebook. Uh, one of my administrators, which she's now my chief of staff, Leslie Elsie, uh, can familiarize any person with you know what our ministry is doing. The Bible colleges we're over, the organizations we're a part of, the master classes we teach, the evangelistic ministries we have, you know yeah. all all this stuff. So if they just you know, more so, uh, even if they can't be a friend, I got like three Facebook pages and they're all full, yes. but nevertheless, yes. um, if, if they were to follow the Facebook page, they'll be able to see everything. And normally Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do lives. I didn't have a chance to do one today, but we're going to, we're going to do one on I Thursday. I love those lives. Let me just put that yeah. out for those lives. I have tuned in to those lives and they have been amazing. So Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. I love your ministry. Um, give your love to my wife. I love yes. what you guys are doing. I'm gonna actually join one of the master classes, and hopefully, I can take yes. a course in the Bible college. Sure. You know, I'm in PhD mode, so everything's wrapped sure. up in it. But sure. I would love to do that. I want to appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part Absolutely. today of this interview. I know it went a little bit past what we said, but it sure. was so deep. Um, so sure. check it out. I love it. We have another guest that we're going to be interviewing later on this month. So Amen. stay tuned. And thank you so much. Dr. Absolutely. Thank you. You All got right. it. Bye-bye.